Sometimes while painting the portrait, details can get overwhelming. Things like pores, wrinkles, flyaway hairs. If you really pay attention, there's just too much stuff to ever consider painting. So one of my favorite ways to get around this without driving myself insane by detail is to paint the impression of what I see. And this is nothing new in art. Artists have been using this technique for hundreds and hundreds of years. The most notable and famous form of this technique was adopted by 19th century artists in France, often using unblended brush strokes with a focus on macro values rather than micro details. This art movement was of course called Impressionism. Artists like Renoir, Manet, Pizarro, and Monet were at the center of it, inventing an entirely new way to represent the world on canvas. If you're unfamiliar with what Impressionism is, let's take a look at this painting by Monet. For me, the most special part of this painting has always been the way that Claude Monet painted the water of the River Seine. When we look at this water from a distance, it looks realistic, and lifelike. But as soon as I zoom in, all you see are horizontal brush strokes of different values and colors. Micro details are often simplified and sometimes just completely ignored. And as we zoom back out, it's clear that Monet was able to create a highly detailed impression of this water by simplifying major values and hues into single brush strokes. Now, I'm not going to have a full lesson on Impressionism here, but this is one of the defining characteristics within Impressionistic paintings, taking extremely complicated parts of life and light and simplifying them down into the essentials. And although this style of painting is often attributed to the Impressionists, it's always been a technique relied upon by artists from every generation. The Impressionists just took it a bit further to create a new aesthetic in art. I can go over hundreds of examples of this technique throughout art history, but let's just go over one. The painting you're looking at now is one of the many self-portraits painted by Rembrandt. This one was completed in 1660, which was 200 years before the Impressionists. Rembrandt was a Baroque artist, part of the Dutch Golden Age, and was definitely not an Impressionist, but look at his technique. Specular highlights are reduced to brush strokes of unblended color, and the hair is simplified to the absolute essentials of shadows, midtones, and highlights. We don't see anything like skin pores, eyelashes, or individual flyaway hairs, yet everything is there and we see it all through Rembrandt's impression of reality. So just like the Impressionists, Rembrandt simplified complex forms and textures to paint exactly what he needed to paint, and his works speak for themselves. All the paintings shown in this little art history lesson are at my local art museum, which is the Metropolitan Museum of Art, or the Met, in New York. If you watch any of my other videos, you probably know this, but to me, it's one of the best art museums in the world and a must visit if you're ever in New York City. So within this painting lesson, we'll go over modern techniques to help simplify the complex parts in portrait painting. Rather than painting every single detail we see, we'll be relying on creating an impression of some parts to make the painting easier. Before we begin, I want to say thank you to Robert, who joined as a Tier 1 member this last week. And I'd also like to thank the Tier 2 members, all of which have been members for three months. That includes Jeremy, Dwayne, M. Shibley, and Andrew. And of course, thank you to Alex, who's been a Tier 3 member for one month. It's extremely nice of you guys, and I really appreciate your generous support. So the first thing we're going to do is mix a basic dark flesh tone. We're going to be using this color for the majority of the portrait, which is going to cover all the warm tones. And then later on, we're going to glaze some sepia and some black over the darker shadows to get some cooler values in. After straining this paint through a filter, I sprayed it on a blank piece of paper to compare to the photo reference. This color looks close enough to me, so that's what I'm going to use for the majority of this painting. If you're going to be painting along with me, up on the screen now is my completed painting, so you could use this as your reference. On the right side of the screen, I set up a grid for you, so you could use this to transfer over to your canvas or your paper. These are high resolution photos, and this video is in 4K, so if you take a screenshot of this, it should be plenty of resolution to use as a reference. On my canvas, I drew out my contours using a 2H pencil and a grid. I'm not going to waste time going through this in this video, but if you want to learn how to do this, make sure you check out some of my older videos where I walk you through the entire process. Any airbrush that you have will work just fine for this style of painting. I'm using an Iwata Custom Micron Takumi, and I'm spraying throughout this whole painting at 20 PSI. When I paint any portrait, I usually like to start with the eyes, just because the orbits, which are basically the eye sockets, are the part of the skull that's farthest away from us. I guess at this point, it's basically just a habit, but for me, it's always easiest to start with the eyes. So the first thing that stood out to me when I was looking at the reference is that this upper eyelid, where these eyelashes are, is basically one solid color which connects to the eye itself, to the iris. This color obviously is gonna have to be darker later on, but for now, I'm just using that flesh tone that we mixed in the beginning of the video, 
because starting with lighter values is always safer. If I make a mistake and place part of this curve in the wrong area, it's much easier to erase a lighter value. Of course, I want all these lines sharp, so I'm using a shield to help me out. While I'm using a shield, you'll see that I'm constantly moving it around to help find one part of the curve on the shield to fit the part of the painting I'm working on. So with this part of the iris, which is obviously a circle, I could still get the circle painted in just by shifting the shield around. I made this shield myself with a Cricut, but if you're looking to buy one yourself, I recommend picking up Drew Blair's. He makes them in a bunch of different sizes. They're really high quality, and I like them so much that I just decided to make my own. And if you want to make your own like I did, I have a video on that. It's pretty simple to do. And also, if you want, you could just cut out pieces of paper. That works just as well. Once I have the basic shapes of the upper eyelid and the iris itself mapped in, I'm switching over to freehand and spraying this in just to darken all the values up. You'll see within the eye that I used a shield to spray around one small section in the upper right hand of the iris. That is a specular highlight, a part where the eye is reflecting light. And from here, I'm going to switch over to an electric eraser and just clean this up to get this really bright. A specular highlight basically is going to be pure white. And of course, since these colors are transparent, we're not using any opaque paint in order to get areas light. We're erasing into the paint, showing more of that gesso on the canvas underneath. When I need to paint in very thin lines, like this line defining the lower eyelid, this is the technique that I like to use. I'm placing my shield along the line and then I'm just lightly spraying on the shield. When some of that overspray gets on the area underneath, it's going to give me a very, very thin line. I'm going to do the same thing on the left side here. And to get my shield to fit, you can see I'm just moving around till I find a part of the curve that fits this lower eyelid. And then again, I'm just lightly spraying on the shield, letting that overspray just kind of dust onto the canvas to give me a very thin and sharp line. I'm not going to start painting the nose just yet, but what I want to do is just define this contour line where part of the nose is kind of blocking the eye behind it, just using my shield and lightly spraying over the edge of it. Of course, while I'm doing this, I'm always looking at my line drawing underneath. That's going to be my guide to where values need to go. Besides using shields, frisket film is also an excellent way to give you sharp lines. For this curve above the left eye into the brow ridge, I'm just placing this frisket on and then cutting into it. This way, when I spray some paint there, I'll have a nice, sharp, defined line between the background and the portrait itself. Then switch back over to the airbrush using the same flesh tone and lightly spray it in. And because this area just above the eye is softer, I'm painting this in freehand, letting the airbrush give me a very soft transition. It's also a darker value, and since I'm using transparent paint, I'm just going to spray more paint up here. Before we start adding in any detail to the eye, what I want to do is just kind of map in this area just underneath the eye, just below the eyelid. So just like before, I'm using a piece of frisket and cutting into it, then switching back to my airbrush to just lightly spray in some paint here. For a few of these folds of the skin underneath the eye, I'm using my shield. And these are pretty dark, so I sprayed a little bit more paint. I'm not really bouncing the paint off the shield, just spraying right on the edge. And now I'm just going to work my way around here, darkening up some of the areas that just seem too light. And of course, while you're doing this, make sure you're looking at the reference. That's why I put it on the left side of the screen. Pay attention to where you see dark and light values. And to try to help out new painters who are just getting into portrait painting, I'm using my completed painting as a reference rather than the reference photo. My hope is that since my painting is simpler than the reference photo, it's going to help make it easier for newer painters. So underneath this eye, I see some texture there. This sometimes happens if a woman's wearing mascara. So what I'm doing is using my airbrush freehand and trying to spray in a bunch of small little dots next to each other. I'm not spraying too much paint here. I'm just lightly pulling back on the airbrush trigger, just getting very soft little dots. Eventually I'll erase into this, but it just gives me something, a little texture there to work into later. If you look at my completed painting on this left eye, you'll see that there's a very thin highlight right between the iris and the lower eyelid. So the tool that I'm using here is an X-Acto blade. All I'm doing is running it along that edge to pull out a very thin line of paint. When you use an X-Acto blade to scratch out paint, it's going to remove 100% of the paint, so the highlight is going to be pure white. So while I have this X-Acto blade in my hand, I'm just going to scratch out this specular highlight in the eye to brighten it up. Now there's some subtle texture on this lower eyelid where some bumps on the skin are catching some highlights, giving us very subtle specular highlights. 
So the tool I'm using for this is my electric eraser and just lightly tapping a few dots here just on the lower right hand side of this eyelid. When you look at something like skin texture, there's just so much stuff going on. So if you just add some small dots like this, it's going to give us that impression that there's a lot more texture going on there than what we're actually painting. And I'm going to be using this technique throughout the whole portrait, again, kind of fitting in the theme with this video to simplify everything to make it easier to paint. Using an electric eraser always pulls out too much paint so the highlight's too bright. So what I'm doing here is switching back to my airbrush and lightly spraying a thin glaze with this paint over the top of that area we just erased, darkening it back up, making it look more natural. For the dark eyelashes, we're gonna use my favorite tool for this and that of course is a colored pencil. If you'd like, you could use some black paint with a very thin script liner paintbrush, but Colored pencil is just so much easier for me. I'm gonna work my way around these eyelids and I'm gonna have the eyelashes longer on the left side. And as I move toward the center where the nose is, I'm just gonna make them shorter. I'm not at all concerned with trying to get these in perfect or try to match every single eyelash. I'm just trying to create the impression of it by adding longer ones to the left and shorter ones to the right. When painting or drawing in eyelashes, it's really common just to add in too many. So make sure you take your time on this. Just add a few, see what it looks like. And if you feel like you need to add more, just sketch in a few more. And as I work my way in adding in these eyelashes, you can see that I'm just adding a very subtle curve on each one of them. Any brand of colored pencil will work just fine for this. My favorite one is made by Prismacolor and it's a line called Very Thin. And they just, they're kind of harder colored pencils and you could sharpen them to a very thin point. So it works great for something like small hairs, like eyelashes. So from here, let's move up above the eye, working our way up to the eyebrow. I wanna add a few curves and a few subtle skin creases just above the eye. So you can see I'm using my shield and then lightly spraying on the shield itself, letting the overspray just get onto that canvas and give me that very thin line. I'll do the same thing a few more times up here and I'm kind of spraying sporadically along the shield. I'm not spraying an even coat all around it. That way it helps just break up a line and it doesn't make it look too linear. Next, we're gonna be erasing into this area to scratch out some textures. But before I do that, I just want some of this area darker. So I'm spraying more of that transparent paint to darken the value. Switching over to the eraser, which is of course an ink eraser. This is one made by Faber-Castell. I'll have links for them down below. These are more aggressive than normal erasers and they just help remove the paint a lot easier. With this eraser, I'm just starting on the right side of this eyelid. And you can see that the motion I'm using is basically left and right, just like you would a normal eraser if you're erasing words on a piece of loose leaf. I'm not really concerned about specific textures right now. I'm just trying to alter the value by removing paint with the eraser to make the right side of this upper eyelid lighter. I'm going to add some more paint to the left side of this upper eyelid to help darken it. But you could see here that what we're getting is something called a gradient. And what this is, is a transition from a light value to a dark value. Of course, it's lighter on the right side. And as the left side gets darker, we get that 3D effect. It looks like light is hitting the right side. And the illusion that we're getting is it's making it look like that upper eyelid is kind of moving away, rounding away from us as it moves over to the left. So to push this effect further, I'm switching back to the airbrush and darkening the left side of that upper eyelid. You'll notice that I'm not using a shield here because I already used a piece of frisket to help get that sharp line separating the background from the portrait. But if you spray paint like this without a shield, you're always gonna get some overspray. You can see in my completed painting, there's a bit on the left side. This doesn't really bother me, but if it's something you don't like in your painting, just use another shield or a piece of frisket to block it off. Let's switch over to an electric eraser and add some subtle texture here to where we erased out this highlight. What we're doing here is we're basically layering our erasing techniques. We started first with the normal stick eraser, which gave us a pretty smooth erased out area. And now with this, we could add some little dots into it. So if you just kind of add multiple layers of textures, it helps to look like more is going on there. You could spend a ton of time layering your textures to get some really realistic looking skin tones. This lesson is not about that. Again, this is kind of going for the impression, but if you want to go further with it, you know, try it out. The great thing about using erasing techniques and transparent paint is that it's just so forgiving because if you add too much texture and erase out too much paint, it's never a big deal because you could switch right back over to the airbrush, lightly glaze or dust another layer of paint on, and you're kind of back where you started. Going back to a stick eraser, this time I'm using the Stadler rather than the Faber-Castell. You could use either one. They, they're both basically interchangeable. I noticed that the Stadler is just slightly more aggressive. So to lighten this area just below the brow ridge, 
I'm erasing out very small circular motions and I'm keeping these very tight and close together. The goal here is to scratch out random small patterns within the paint so that when the viewer looks at this from a distance, it looks like some sort of skin texture. What's fun about this style of painting is you just don't have to worry too much about trying to get everything absolutely perfect or go for photorealism. It's just nice to kind of relax a bit and let the tools that you have, like your eraser and your airbrush, help you out and do some of the work for you. When I erase in these small circular motions, the eraser is helping to give me these small random patterns, which again, kind of look like skin texture. Let's switch back over to the airbrush and glaze some color over the top of this. Remember the color's transparent, so we're not gonna lose that detail underneath. Now I'm not gonna start painting the forehead just yet, but what I'm gonna do at this point is add some texture onto the blank canvas. I'm still using the flesh tone that we mixed in the beginning of this video, and you can see with this tool, I'm just placing it over the canvas and lightly spraying on it. As I remove this shield, you'll see that we just get a bunch of small dots close to each other. And I'm gonna keep moving this shield around to kind of get these dots in random areas so it doesn't look like there's a pattern going on. If you're new to painting in this style, I'm well aware that this looks very strange at this point, but what this is gonna do, this is gonna help us later to have some randomness into the skin texture up there. We're eventually gonna glaze over this and erase into it, but putting something down like a bunch of small dots is gonna help us out in the long run. And the main goal of this is to break up that natural look you get when using an airbrush. An airbrush atomizes and sprays paint, so it always is gonna give us a soft and smoky look. So using tools like erasers and texture templates just help break up that soft, smoky look of an airbrush. From here, I'm gonna go back to my eraser and my electric eraser just to add more texture. Again, I'm doing what I said before, just constantly layering these textures on top of each other to add more to it. It's really up to you how far you wanna push it. You could add one layer of texture, you could add 50. The more you add, the more realistic and natural you can get it to look. But of course, you always have to be looking at your reference and trying to copy what you see. Moving back to the eye, I'm just adding some more lashes to it. And also I wanna darken up some areas of it. So the color I'm switching to here is black using this right out of the bottle. Again, spraying at 20 PSI, I'm spraying right over the iris and the pupil, and then just kind of going over the whole area of where the eyelashes are to darken them up. Black is a pretty dark and unforgiving color and you're always gonna get overspray. So you can see I'm going over my highlights and cleaning them back up. And to finish up this part of the eye, I'm just going around adding in some texture where I feel like I missed some and also darkening some areas that just are too light at this point. So moving up to the forehead, the first thing I wanna do is define the edge here. So I'm using a shield to spray along the outside. That way I could see where the skull kind of rounds over. For this left eyebrow, I'm just gonna spray this in freehand, adding a bunch of small dots next to each other. To help break it up, I'm just gonna scratch in some lines using an X-Acto blade to help it look like some small flyaway hairs. Then on top of that texture, I'm gonna use my colored pencil again and just draw in a bunch of small lines next to each other to make it look like an eyebrow. Let's switch back over to the airbrush and glaze some color over the top of this just to help darken everything up. And of course for this color, I'm back to using that flesh tone that we mixed at the beginning. Now this next part isn't necessary, but since this is a painting demo, I wanna show you guys another technique you could use to add some more texture and randomness to that skin. With my electric eraser, I'm tapping in a bunch of small little bright dots. And as I'm placing in these small dots, what I'm trying to do is add them just to the right of each one of those dots that we got from when we use that skin texture template, those darker ones. Every pore and bump on skin texture is always gonna have a highlight and corresponding shadow. So if you wanted, you can go around the entire skin and just add these all around shadows first and then highlights. Again, this is more of a simplified painting tutorial. So I'm gonna hold back on showing you this whole technique and we'll do it for another one where I could really spend time showing you how to do it. If you do decide to add some highlights like this with your electric eraser, Remember that they're always gonna to be too bright because that electric eraser is basically pulling out 100% of the paint. So you can see what I'm doing here is going back to the airbrush and just spraying, glazing that flesh tone over the top of it. And that's gonna help knock everything back down. If you don't wanna use Frisket for the outlines of your paintings, another great option is using vinyl tape. The one I'm using here is quarter inch blue vinyl tape made by 3M. This stuff works great and you can set it up around any curve you like. I like to mask off the other side of it with some masking tape so I don't get any overspray there. And then I just lightly spray over it. And you'll see that when I pull this off, we get a nice sharp line. From here, let's move on to the last part of this week's video, which is gonna be the nose. The first thing I wanna do is use my shield to help define the edge of the nose here. This area is gonna be darker than the cheek right behind it, so I wanna get some paint in there first to kinda of map it in. Next, I'm gonna move down to the left nostril, which is gonna be the darkest part of this painting. Again, I'm always starting with my lightest color, which is the flesh tone, 
We're going to need some darker ones later. We'll probably use some sepia or some black to darken them up. But for now, just use the flesh tone and see if you could map these in. I like to use the shield first to give me that sharp outline. And then I'm switching back over to freehand in here with the micron. I could spray this in pretty accurately and tightly. Just hold it pretty close to the surface, about an inch or so, and lightly spray it in. If you're using an airbrush that's not designed for detail, you could do this exactly the same. The only thing you're going to have to change is you're probably going to have to be closer to the surface to get a tighter spray pattern. From here, I'm just going to work my way around the left side of this nose, darkening up the values. I'm not thinking about texture here at all. I'm just focusing on trying to get areas as dark as I want them to be. If you look at the reference, you'll notice that the darkest areas on this nose are at the bottom where the nostrils are, and then off to the right. And of course, since you're using a transparent paint, you just need to spray more paint there. Let's move along to the right nostril. Again, I'm just using my shield to spray these lines in sharp, and I'm constantly following my line drawing underneath. That grid is so important to get correct when you draw it in the beginning. Now I just want to round out the nose by darkening the bottom and the right side, so I'm spraying more paint there, working my way up the bridge of the nose, spraying a little more. I want to add some subtle texture here, so instead of using a skin texture template, I'm just going to paint this in freehand. All I'm doing is kind of bouncing the trigger on the airbrush back and forth, move my airbrush around, and what this is going to do, just like the skin texture template, is give me a bunch of small dots. Since we're not using the shield, the airbrush is going to give us softer dots than the skin texture template, so this could be useful for some parts of your portraits. I want to darken up the right side of the nose a little bit more, so I'm going to spray some more paint on here. And from this, what we're going to do is we're going to switch back to the eraser and pull out this large highlight right in the center. I'm just using the stick eraser here, erasing in small circular motions like we did before above the eye. And you can see I'm kind of extending this highlight out to the right as it moves along the side of the nose. We're going to add some more textures to the nose next week, but this is where we're going to wrap up the first part of this video. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. I'll see you back here next week.